<laughs> I right, kind of so won in the end. <laughs> yeah, I did for sure. But yeah, I got forked in the head. <laughs> Man, so, uh, I'm definitely uh, gonna have to check that out. Yeah, for sure. It's it's kind of wild. <laughs> so at sacrifice last year when you uh, when you had your head shaved, uh, kind of it looked like there's a lot of blood coming out there. Uh, kind of was that all planned, or was that from an injury beforehand, or kind of what None. was the deal there? And none of the injuries you ever saw on TNA that was done to me was play, like planned out or anything like that. Every single time I got busted open, it was an enormous shock. And a lot of times you can see me swear the second it happened. So you see me put my hand up to wherever it is, and then a swear would come out of my mouth because I knew what was happening next. But um, the match was actually a ladder match between Gail, Kim, and myself, and uh, mm -hmm. the ladder actually busted me open right in the head, like within like three minutes of us starting the match. I mean, and then did, after, we're, 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 I'm sorry, hmm? I was just, just going to ask her uh, what what was TNA's uh, thoughts on 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 you uh, bleeding in the match? Obviously, you couldn't help it, but um, did they frown upon the women? That even though you know they're in these kind, y'all were in these kind of violent matches, um, if you want to say it. The majority of the time, I was videotaped in the back getting stitched up. So <laughs> I'm gonna say they didn't really <laughs> frown upon it. So they weren't that. like high fiving me or anything, but um, they were actually usually really worried because they knew that it was usually an accident when it happened. So I I don't know what the hell happened. Like I was born with paper skin or whatever was going on, but. <laughs> I swear it was like for three months straight. It was like every match I was in, I was getting busted open somehow. Yeah, well, you got a great nickname out of it, so. <laughs> yeah, that works for me. It either sounds like really weird porn, or I'm a <laughs> badass. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of, what was the reaction of some of the other some of the other girls backstage after that incident? Of course, on camera, Angelina and Velvet had to keep playing their characters. But what was it like when you got backstage? Um, everybody was pretty much worried because there was a giant gash on my forehead, like the side of my head. So, and for me, I'm not, I'm not a fan of needles or stitches or any of that fun stuff. So for me, I just kind of tried to avoid the doctor as much as possible. But, um, yeah, they finally brought me over and made me sit down next to the doctor. And the majority of them sat right next to me and made sure I was okay while they were sewing me up. Because usually if I see a needle, I'm bound to throw up or pass out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really hardcore, can you tell? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah you, you might not want to comment on that. Uh, it's going to hurt your rep there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what to the girls backstage are you, uh, are you close with and still close with? Um, with the knockouts, all the girls are really close-knit. Like, we're like a little family, which is great. Like, I talk to uh, Taylor Wilde and ODB at least every day. I talk to... Um, awesome Kong and Raisha Saeed on a regular basis. I hear from the hey, Awesome Kong can talk? Um, she texts really well. <laughs> Her Twitter's uh, pretty interesting, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, she's she's a great person. So, like, I, I'm really lucky. I made really great friends while I was there, so I still talk to the majority of them at least once a week. If not, it's more so. So what was their reaction when uh, they found out that you, your contract wouldn't be renewed or whatever the situation was? What was the situation, if you can't start? Um, Yeah, I, I was released is what ended up happening. Um, they told me that I didn't have uh, – this is what I was told was that they didn't have anything else for my character. They didn't see it going anywhere, and they wanted to get new girls. So um, when the majority of the girls found out, they – they were they were a little bit freaked out by it because it was really shocking for them and for myself. Like nobody had actually expected it to happen. Well, I mean, dropping the ball here. They seem to be letting go great talent like yourself, P.D. Williams, Sanjay Dutt, and they're bringing in, uh, you know, I, I don't know, Raven, Keith Shane Shaw, Douglas, Shane Douglas uh, Phoebe Richards. Um, I'm not. I don't see their names being big enough to. to to counter your talent, so and you know everybody else's, you know, do 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 you have any thoughts on that and the direction they're going? Um, I, you know, it, it's hard when it's not like something that you have control over. You know, like with wrestling, someone's here one day, they're gone the next. It's kind of like 
it's the same kind of thing as acting or anything like that. Um, I just think that uh, they just want to bring things in a new direction, and there's really nothing any of us can do but just kind of go with the flow and see what we can pick up after. Because it, even if even if we're released, there's a lot of us still being pretty successful on the independent scene, and it just kind of it. I, I don't know how to explain. I guess it's it's not such a bad thing. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm actually I'm actually a big fan of the Stevie Richards stuff that they're doing. Well, um, speaking of a new direction, sorry, Sam, I'm going to ask this one more question. Uh, what about going, weren't you in Ring of Honor at one point or for matches or sex? Uh, what about them? Do you see them as a viable place for you to uh, to show up? I do, actually. I love Ring of, I think Ring of Honor is a great company, and the girls that they have in there, like Sarah Del Rey, Daisy Hayes, Mischief, I think those girls are great, great, great wrestlers. And um, I think... I think eventually, like, we'll be able to talk and figure something out where I can get over there. I'm hoping. I got my fingers crossed. Um, but uh, I think that definitely is a place for me. Okay. All right. Sorry, Shane. I, I've, I've, got, I've got a couple questions uh, sent through email from uh, listeners. They wanted uh, – the first one is, who, in your opinion, was is your greatest uh, female wrestler? My greatest female wrestler. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I really loved Aja Kong and Bull Makana. I think that those girls were friggin' amazing. And uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of the Jumping Bomb Angel. Huge fan. Um, I'm trying to think who else. But for nowadays, I would probably for sure go with um, with Awesome Kong because I think she's so diverse in the ring, and I don't think the fans have actually had a chance to see how great she really is. For her size and her stature, she can move like anybody else. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Or awesome. Either way you look at it. <laughs> uh, the second question is, um, what are your thoughts on promoters putting uh, the females in matches like, you know, bra and panty? <coughs> Like stuff that we saw the WWE used to do before, bra and panty or pillow fights and just straight up dance contests. <laughs> well, unless seriously, if there was a dance contest, I'd totally win that. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think that there's a place for stuff like that. If um, obviously there's a market for it, you know that guys aren't going to turn their heads if something like that is on, like in the ring. Nobody's going to. Some guys are fans of wrestling and I think that there's room for a women's wrestling match and then a match like that if if the promoter sees fit. But um, for me, it's just not something that's up my alley. You know what I mean? I would rather just get in there and kick some ass than try to do a, rip somebody's clothes off. Right. <laughs> okay. Now, we've got, we've got a couple more minutes before we go off the air. I mean, if anybody, if we continue this Everybody can still catch us in the archives. We've got about six minutes left. Uh, but we want to get you, you know, on the hot seat, which is, you know, a little segment where we will do rapid-fire questions and you come up with the first thing, you know, in your head. Are you, are you game? I'm game. Let's do it. All right. All right. All right so first thing. If you had the choice to meet somebody in a dark alley, who would it be? Awesome Kong, China, or Nicole Bass? I'm going to go with Awesome Kong. I've been in the room right there. <laughs> favorite cartoon? My favorite cartoon. Cartoon Network. I do for sure. My favorite cartoon is either I Love Family Guy or Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Favorite comic book? My favorite comic book is, I love Daredevil. It sounds really weird, but I do. I love Daredevil. Okay. Um, greatest announcer, in your opinion? Greatest announcer, Bobby Cruz, Ring of Honor. Wow, we, did. Yeah, we, we had, had him on the show a couple weeks ago. Did you? I just had six flags yeah. with him. If I didn't say that, he'd probably beat me up. <laughs> i got to get on his good side. <laughs> uh, my last one uh, before 
the other guys perhaps jump in, but my last one.